our channel. My name is Jackie and we are so glad that you're here. Today is the very first of our on-site location painting. We are at the Public Garden, which happens to be one of my favorite places to come and paint. So today we're gonna try to keep things simple. We're gonna focus on trees and the water. And then if a little cute duck happens to pop in our painting, we'll just feel really lucky. So come with me and let's get painting. To do the painting, you wanna make sure you have a few things. Number one, you want a canvas or something to paint on. It doesn't necessarily have to be a canvas. I brought an easel today. This is a little table easel. I also have a plate of paint, a glass of water, which is very important for changing your brushes. And then I have paper towel. Paper towel is great, especially when you're outdoors because there will be times you need to wash your brushes off and you want to make sure you have something to wipe them off. I do want to mention that because we are in the city in a public space, there's a lot of background noise. So hopefully that doesn't affect our painting experience too much right now. And maybe it even makes you feel like you're actually here with me. So now I think we are ready to begin. Whenever I am painting a painting, the most important thing is to just cover the background. To begin, take the big brush. I'm gonna give it a little dunk into my water. Every time you use a new brush, you always wanna give it a little dunk in the water. We're gonna make a sky blue to begin. Come down your canvas about a third of the way on the right hand side and you're gonna make a little mark. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the left hand side. I'm gonna come down about a third of the way. And then I'm going to connect those just with a little bit of an arch. So I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to dunk it in the blue again, and I'm going to scoop up my white, because that makes it much easier to blend, and then I'm just going to cover the whole sky. Horizontal strokes. Alright, so for the water, I wanted to look different, I wanted to contrast with the sky. Also, because the water here at the Public Garden is surrounded by so many trees, it has kind of a greenish tint to it. So I'm going to add a little bit of green into my blue and white mixture. You're going to come down in your white remaining space. Come down about halfway, make a little mark. Come on the other side, make another mark. And then like we did up top, you're now just going to connect those. I'm going to continue filling in the water using the color combination I just went over. And I'm going to fill in this space back and forth. All right, that's it for the water. Now we're gonna start onto the grass. So everyone always thinks grass is just green, but the truth is grass has many colors in it. So I have a few different yellows that I can mix in with my green. So I have a really bright yellow here, and then I also have this darker yellow that kind of looks like a peanut butter color, and that will give it a more subdued color. And I'm gonna paint this bottom section where the grass is. So just like before, I'm gonna go back and forth. I'm gonna take my big brush, we're all done with it. I'm gonna put it in my water, and now we're gonna take a dance break. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little curb that I've noticed between your grass and water and the water and sky. It's almost like a little cobblestone. So we're gonna use a square brush for that. I like a square because it gives a nice edge. So I'm gonna take this square brush like I did before, give it a little dunk in your water. We're gonna make gray. And to make gray, we're gonna use a little bit of your black. Just a little bit. The black is extremely powerful. You just need like a tiny dab. And then you're also gonna use a little bit of your white. Again, I'm gonna recommend going on the outer edge so you don't totally contaminate your white. Once you get something that's like a heather gray, I guess, is a good way to describe it. I'm gonna go on my painting. A little perspective lesson. Things that are further away are smaller. Things that are closer to you are bigger. So I'm gonna use the same part of my brush to do the further part. And I'm just gonna let it follow the edge. All right, now on the bottom, I'm gonna make this a little bit wider because it's closer. Like that. Now that I've done that, we're gonna add some trees in the background. I'm gonna use my baby brush because these are really little. So I'm gonna dip my brush into my water, tap it off. I want these bushes to be a darker shade of green, so I'm gonna use a little bit of my blue in with my green. And I'm just gonna do little blobs, okay? So I'm gonna do them all the way across. So I'm gonna do little like blobby trees. I'm gonna go back over and I'm gonna make some areas look a little bigger than others. Bringing up the lines, so some areas are a little bit higher and some are a little lower. Ta da! Now it's time for the big tree. So I'm gonna take this brush, put it in the water. I'm gonna use my round brush because it's a thicker tree that we're making and it carries a little bit more paint. Now we're gonna start off by making the trunk. 
So I have brown here. I'm going to start off on the corner and I'm very lightly going to come up and then out. I'm going to come up again, kind of filling this whole bottom area in. Now what's fun about trees is you can make your branches anywhere, so there's no right or wrong for where your branches are. Another trick to branches is that you always want them to create like a Y shape. So the tree trunk, the round brush is good, the baby brush is great for branches. So I'm going to make some of my branches actually come downwards. Like this, right into your water. You want full composition, so it kind of carries from the left side over to the right side. Now, we're going to add some leaves, so you can use a combination of either your round brush or your baby brush. I commonly like to use both, that way you get a variation in the size of your leaves. I'm going to use my brush almost like a stamp, so I'm starting off with my green, I'm also going to put some of that bright yellow in. I'm going to use the shape of the brush like a stamp. So at the bottom of each of my trees, I always make like a little blob. And then from that blob, you're going to create almost like a V shape going upwards. And I don't like it to just look like a solid green, so I'm adding in more color. So you want to cover your whole tree now. Before we do our finishing touches, I'm going to add a little bit of the grass just to make it a little bit more interesting. So again, I like my grass to be all different colors. I'm going to go on top of the grass that we made earlier. And I'm just going to do what we call little plop and pull lines. So basically, I start at the bottom, my brush is a little heavier, and I just flick my brush upwards. Touches. We're going to do a little highlight. So I do this in all of our painting. We call this the plop and pull. It's just like a really quick little dash of a highlight that kind of pulls the whole piece together. I'm going to start off with the black. Um, if your black is a little dried up like mine is, just add a little bit of the water in. I'm just going to go around the curb. Little plop and pull lines, little dashes. I'm going to put some of the black in the bottom. It's like magical how it will bring everything together. Quick little flicks. Now I'm going to do the same thing but with the white. So I'm just going to kind of wipe my brush on the plate, grab a little bit of the white. Same thing, I'm going to go into my leaves. I'm working on the spot here and I don't love this little area. So the best part about using acrylic paint is that you can paint over things. So I'm going to just take a little bit more of my green, white, and blue. And I'm just going to paint over this area. a landscape. Simplified abstract version of what we're looking at today. If you follow along with us today, we want to see your gorgeous work. So take an artsy pic. Show us a picture of your painted hands, your painted palette, your dirty water, or your wonderful masterpiece. Make sure you tag us at the paint bar and use the hashtag TPBArtsy so we get to see your beautiful work. Be a part of our community. We want you to like our video, share it on social media, subscribe to our channel, and make sure you leave a comment and tell us what you want us to paint next. We want to keep in touch with you. Follow us on social media. The links are down below. Check out our other videos and we can't wait to paint with you soon. Bye!